Okay, here we have an apple tree. This is an old apple tree. This used to be pasture. People feed the cows apples. Apples get shit, the seeds get shit out and they grow, grow apple trees. And one thing I can uh, tell you is whenever you're hunting an apple tree and you can see all this huge security cover behind me, it's cattail marsh, a little pond here, crop field on the other side. Typically what happens is a mature buck, a three and a half year old or older buck is gonna come out of this marsh, gonna come down through here. And he's, if he's gonna eat apples, he'll eat them on the back side of the tree. He's not gonna make himself vulnerable if he doesn't have to by coming out on the side that the cameraman's on because he's more vulnerable because it's more open. He's gonna come back here where he's right next to the security cover. Branches are overhanging here. There's gonna be apples on the ground here. He's gonna eat apples where he has ample security cover to, to make a quick exit. So whenever you're hunting in an apple tree, you have to make sure if it butts up to security cover on the opposite side of the tree you're hunting from, you have to clear the tree out. And if you notice, I've made a huge gap in this tree. I cut a lot of this tree out so that I could shoot to the back side of this apple tree from the tree that I'm hunting from. Uh, that's a big, big deal. Uh, I've shot three bucks at apple trees. I've shot more than that, but three book bucks at apple trees that actually came just in on the back side of the tree. And that's the only shot I was gonna get. And I, re I remember one time one came in, ate a couple apples, it was a book buck, and he just turned around and went back the way he came from. So I didn't even get a shot at that one. So after that happened, I started opening up the trees a little bit more than I used to. But as you can see, I've raped this tree pretty good. So I've got shots from my hunting tree to the back side of this tree. And obviously I got them to the front side. And now what I've got to do, because apple trees, these little sprouts grow so fast, uh, they require a lot of cleaning up every spring. So I'm going to cut all these little shoots that grew last summer. So I still have shots because there's, if you look at that right up there to your left, you can see all those shoots that have grown up since last year. So all that stuff's got to be cleaned out so that I have shots back here. See right now from my tree, I don't have a shot through here because all this new stuff grew just from last spring. Helps to have a good saw. I've got a silky saw, got a bunch of Corona saws. Corona's makes real good saws for the price point. Silkies are very expensive, but like anything else, you get what you pay for. Coglins makes a pretty good camp saw. They call it a camp saw because it's, it's got a longer blade. So you got a lot longer cutting stroke. cut everything. When they come in in low light, doesn't take a whole lot to screw up a shot. Cut anything that could possibly deflect an arrow. Some of this stuff's a little higher. you're trying to prepare trees and you don't have an extension saw, you're missing out. Probably one of the most critical things to prep in a new location where you can cut stuff. Obviously on public you can't, but.
Okay, now you can see how much more open this is. Buck can be back here. Trees behind the cameraman. He can come in here, cruise through here. There's a big runway coming through here. There's a runway over here. I've got shots pretty much any place through here. There's an opening to my tree. Here's an opening to my tree. Uh, and I have an opening on this side as well. Uh, you want to take a picture of these runways? Just slide a little bit to your left. Even though they're covered with snow and ice, you can obviously tell that's a runway coming through this marsh grass. And if you pan around, if you come over here and pan around, you can just see there's runway coming through here. There's a runway going through the edge of that pond. Now the water's been really high since last spring. Uh, typically, that's the edge of the pond. So that's why that runway is there. Uh, this year, by fall, it may be down that low. If it's not, they'll skirt farther out to the side. But when you look over in through here, just lots and lots of security cover. That's what big bucks like. Gravitate to security cover. Again, security cover around the kill zone and transition security cover to the kill zone. One thing you always want to keep in mind when you're hunting a feeding destination location, like an apple tree or an oak tree, uh, it's especially apple trees that because they're such a high priority uh, feeding location by does and then the bucks obviously come in there as well. That's usually where you'll find scrapes uh, even during early season. Uh, where there's heavy doe traffic that's where the older bucks you know put down their scent and uh, but keep in mind destination feeding locations small destination feeding locations should only be hunted in the evenings because if you try to come into an apple tree on a morning hunt before daylight there's an excellent chance you're spooking the very deer you're trying to kill or if there's not the deer you want to kill you're going to spook does or fawns or whatever and you're going to have a lot of commotion possibly some snorting uh, so feeding locations, destination small feeding locations should be evening hunting locations only. This here's another apple, apple tree. Uh, actually it's within shooting distances of the same tree. I just did the other apple tree, cleaned it up. One's on one side and one's on the other, but uh, both of them have runways. Going out into the cattail marsh, I just cleaned this one up and picked up all the branches. So now I got a clear shot from the tree to this tree the back side of this tree as well as that one because again uh, a mature buck 90 percent of the time if he's going to come in here and eat apples he will come to the back side of the tree where he's got he's closest to the security cover so he's a quick exit if he needs to okay i drew a little whiteboard here of that uh that apple tree location to give you a little lay of the land uh, there's a road way over here. There's a swamp across the road. This is north. So on the east side of the road, there's more swamp. It's a different kind of swamp. It's marsh grass and a lot of small trees. Uh, on this side of the road, it's all cattail marshes and marsh grasses. There is some interspersed uh, red, red brush, you know, that 10 foot tall brush. Uh, and even during the years when this marsh is wet, there's a lot of dry humps and there's actually a dry, there's a little bit of a dry ridge that's maybe three foot high. Um, I don't know what it's from, but it kind of runs north and south down through this marsh. And that's dry all the time. And that's got brush on it and that's over in here. But anyway, this is all su superior bedding area. This, all of this in here is crop fields. Uh, this here is about a 15 yard, Depends on where you're at, it's 15 to 20 yard buffer of just nasty brush and briars that runs around the, along the edge of the crop field like most crop fields have. Um, and again, this is cattails and marsh grass. There's a pond here, uh, it's, you know, it's relatively shallow, ducks and geese are on it all the time. And there's basically runways all through this marsh and, the, and then they all kind of converge here at these apple trees because these are the only two apple trees down this whole edge. So with these being apple trees, I only hunt this location, just like any apple trees that are really close to a crop field. I only hunt this location when these apple trees, one of them, at least one of them are dropping apples and the crop is in standing corn. And 
once the corn is picked, I don't hunt this location anymore. I will not hunt those trees if this, any of these fields are exposed. So beans, hay, uh, you know, picked corn, they don't get hunted. So the location, and when I do enter this, again, apple trees are primarily for evening hunts because if you go into an apple tree on a morning hunt, you're gonna spook the very deer you're trying to kill possibly with your entry because they'll be feeding there, you know, in the, before daylight. So my evening entry is I'm coming through the cornfield. I never walk the edge. So it's an evening hunt only, but I never walk the edge because there could potentially be deer bedded in this little buffer of brush or just the other side of it in that marsh. So I always walk through, through the standing corn and then I make a beeline directly to my hunting tree. So I'm not spooking anything with my entry down that edge. Now, if you notice, these two trees are separated from each other. And I don't like that scenario. I don't like that at all, but it's, it's what it is. So the reason I don't like it is that when I'm sitting in my tree, if there's, let's say, does and a couple does and fawns eating at both of these trees, and then let's say a buck comes into this location over here, yet there's still deer feeding over here, because they're probably... They're, they're about a 15 to 20 yard shot, so they're probably about 30, 35 yards apart. So a doe and a, you know, a doe would feel comfortable still eating here if a buck was that far away. Obviously, if a buck during the rut phases was coming into an apple tree and there was a doe there and she wasn't in heat, she would more than likely leave with her fawns. So the reason I don't like two trees that are a, where the gap between them, if I have to make a move here, I'm keeping my eye focused on that deer and what he's doing while I'm making my movements so he doesn't pick me. And I have a hard time keeping my eye focused on here. So when I have to keep my eye focused on just one of these two trees, there's a potential if there's deer at the other one of me getting picked with my movements because I'm watching the buck I'm trying to shoot to make sure I can move when he's not paying attention. So if you own property and you're, or you're, you're hunting in a managed area and you're looking at putting in some, uh, you know, some sort of a mass tree or whatever the preferred food tree is in the part of the country you live in, make sure if you're going to put in a couple, two or three, put them in the same vicinity so that basically if you're hunting out of a saddle, all you got to do is make one movement from behind the tree to the side slightly swing to the side and you can shoot at all of those trees. That way you don't have to worry about the second destination location giving you away and getting picked. Um, also, if you're hunting in a managed area or private property where you can actually do something, you can plant trees, um, always pick out your tree first. Pick out a tree where you're gonna be up high enough, you're gonna have good cover, you're gonna have a crotch, you're gonna have some branches. Uh, and also make sure that the tree you pick out has excellent transition security cover from a bedding area to the spot where you're going to put the trees. Because if you're hunting in uh, an area where there's any semblance of pressure and you're hunting a, a mature buck that's got a, some smarts to him, he's not going to come out of a bedding area and walk through open timber to access eating at this spot. Even if this spot has excellent perimeter security cover, uh, he's not going to make that vulnerable movement through no security cover during daylight hours to access that spot, even though that spot had, it, had uh, perimeter security cover and he came from a bedding area which had security cover. He's not going to make that vulnerable movement. So in this area, there's just lots of runways coming out of these cattails from every direction. There's also a major runway that skirts about 30 yards inside of this field edge, and that's basically what bucks will travel uh, when they're sent checking for does that in the evening you know they'll come through there maybe right at dark or 10 minutes before dark and they'll scent check for the does that have crossed out of here into the standing corn or vice versa on a morning and again I'm not hunting this in the morning but that runway would be used by them like at 9 or 10 o'clock if the security cover was ample and their testosterone levels were high enough that they're going to make that vulnerable movement in the daylight uh, they're going to take that runway because they got a good, they got a good security block here from the from this field. Uh, they're going to scent check for those that came back into bed. So that's 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 going to be basically a runway for scent checking, 
Also, it's a runway where they can come out of this marsh. They don't have to walk through the marsh. They can walk this pretty decent runway to go across the road into the, that other swamp or vice versa, coming from that other swamp, coming over here to come out into these crop fields or to eat at these apple trees in the evening. Um, again, I only hunt this spot when this is in standing corn and when these trees, one of those two trees are dropping apples. I'm about 30 feet up in this tree and I showed cutting all the little shoots that come off these apple trees. Every year, apple trees, they'll grow all these little small shoots and you know they can be three or, they can grow three or four foot long and they're you know maybe a little bit smaller than your little finger diameter but uh, those have to be trimmed because you want to be able to shoot to the back side of these trees because mature bucks in pressured areas like where i'm hunting and this is extremely pressured uh mature bucks they're going to come in and they're going to eat apples on the back side of the tree as tight to the security cover as possible and the security cover butts up to the back side of these trees pretty good. So they could basically almost be standing with their butts in, this, in the cattails and be eating apples under the outside back sides of these two trees. So I had to clear out the whole front of the trees so I, got, I can shoot from this tree, I can shoot to the back side of either one of these trees into the cattails. That's a big deal. That's a huge deal if you're hunting uh, any kind of fruit tree or even a white oak. Uh, if it butts up to heavy security cover, mature bucks are typically going to feed at the backside where they're butting up to security cover so they got that quick exit. So make sure you've got that shot through the tree to the backside. There's nothing more frustrating to spend all the time you do hunting and then you don't prep the location properly and you have a buck come in and he feeds in a location or he comes into a scrape area or whatever the scenario may be and you don't have a shot opportunity. Uh, they don't, shot opportunities don't happen that often. I haven't had a, I haven't even seen a shooter buck in Michigan in two years. So obviously I have not had a shot opportunity. They're very rare in pressured areas and pressured states. So when they do happen, you wanna make sure you can take advantage of it. So make sure you clear out to the backside of whatever the master fruit trees or wherever you're hunting, make sure you've got shots to the edge of the security cover, if not within it. You know, if, uh, a lot of times if I'm hunting a tree and it, this is in, and it's standing corn, if I'll get permission from the farmer, if I'm hunting a tree that's on the edge of the, the cornfield, and again, I would only hunt it when it's standing corn if I'm on an edge of a field, I'll get a permission from the farmer to maybe clear out a five yard swatch of corn 30 yards out into the field. So to, if I do any rattling or something, or if a buck's, you know, typically the rows run this direction in line with the edge uh, for the windrows, uh, typically a buck will come down, skirt that edge, sent checking for does that came in and out of the corn. Or if I'm doing some rattling, and I've done this before, you know, they'll come in, they'll come in relatively close in the standing corn, but they won't commit to coming outside of the standing corn because they don't want to leave the security cover unless they actually have the visual of the two bucks fighting. So I want to, I typically, if I'm on the edge of a standing cornfield, which I haven't done any of those videos yet this year, on the edge, uh, where it's a rattle tree basically only, um, typically I'll have a 30 yard shooting lane out into the standing corn. And again, once the corn's cut, that's done. Corn is your friend uh, when you're hunting ag areas, if you know how to hunt it, uh, but once it's down, it makes, once the corn is picked, it makes all the interior of the timber better because it condenses the, condenses the deer traffic because a lot of deer bed in the corn. But when the corn is standing, uh, knowing how to hunt standing corn is a big, big deal in ag areas. The guy that used to live in this house, uh, one year when I was hunting here, and this wasn't standing corn, he actually, came out of his house because I had, I park right here. His property line's right here on the north side of his house. He actually came out of his house about 45 minutes before dark, which is about when the deer would start to move. And he shot a shotgun two or three times every five minutes, just to make sure to stifle any mature buck movement coming out of this marsh to where I was hunting along this tree line. That's how messed up some of these hunters are. But that's what you deal with on public land. You deal with a lot of crap and you're on pressured property, you just deal with a lot of stuff that, you know, TV guys 
they don't have to deal with. So anyway, that's that property.